Battery shock reducer using Maxwell supercapacitors. Here is a video overview of the experiment. This is a small 120 volt AC motor with a flywheel. No results are reported for this motor. This is a larger 120 volt AC motor with a flywheel. The following results are based on this motor. This is a motor starter. It's controlled in lab view. It's a DC to AC 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. That's the AC output end. And that's the 12 volt DC input end. There are six 2.7 volt 650 farad supercapacitors from DigiKey. There's an integration kit. It has PCBs with connector bars, washers, and nuts. They help prevent overvoltage. The large knife switch is for the capacitors. It's 50 amp, 50 millivolt shunt for measuring battery current. National Instruments breakout board. That's a small relay. It drives the motor starter. Small 35 watt hour 12 volt lead acid battery. And a larger 12 volt lead acid battery. And the battery charger. This is a 120 volt AC to 8 volt DC adapter. It has a transformer. It is not a switching adapter. This transducer allows LabVIEW to measure the 120 volt RMS AC output. Wires connecting the battery, capacitor, and inverter are two gauge wire. You will now see two plots showing battery voltage during inverter turn on and motor startup, one without the capacitors and one with the capacitors. Here's the battery voltage without the capacitors. The inverter is off here. The battery voltage drops 0.9 volts during inverter turn on. Inverter is on. Battery voltage drops 1.3 volts during large motor turn on. Battery voltage remains nearly 11.1 .1 volts as the flywheel comes up to speed. Battery voltage recovers after flywheel has reached maximum speed. Battery voltage recovers more after inverter is turned off. Now, battery voltage when capacitors are included. Battery voltage drops a tenth of a volt compared to nine tenths of a volt during inverter turn on. Battery voltage drops a half a volt compared to 1.3 volts during large motor turn on. Capacitors continue to support the flywheel spin up. Battery voltage recovers after flywheel has reached maximum speed. Battery voltage recovers more after inverter is turned off. Compare them side by side, on the left without capacitors, on the right with capacitors. 
This demonstrates battery shock reduction. Is this a major use for capacitors currently? Now, without capacitors, here are all the VI plots. This is the 12 volt side, 2.1 seconds per division. This is the 120 volt side. There's the voltage, both sides, the current, both sides, the power, both sides. The inverter input voltage is different from the battery voltage by the voltage drop in the wires and internal resistance of the batteries and capacitor. Currently off, but it will show few cycles of the AC output voltage. Now, with capacitors, all VI plots. Horizontal axis shows the counts. 2.1 seconds per division horizontally is based on loop time and counts. Here's the LabVIEW block diagram. It requires an understanding of LabVIEW. In summary, a 120 volt AC motor with large flywheel is spun up from rest in about 6 seconds. It's powered by a 12 volt DC small 35 watt hour lead acid battery, which is too small without the supercapacitor bank. These Maxwell supercapacitors provide additional sufficient current through two gauge wires to reduce the initial voltage shock and allow the motor to start. The 2000 watt inverter converts 12 volts DC to a pure sine wave 120 volts AC. Without the capacitors, the battery power approaches the 2000 watt limit. With the capacitors, the battery power remains below the 2000 watt limit. In both cases, the motor requires about 800 watts during flywheel spin-up. With the capacitors, the motor final speed is reached quicker and the voltage shock to the battery is smaller.